We in museums, we spend a lot of time trying to understand what people would like to know and what would help them be enlightened, be energized, be engaged with the artwork on view. So I spend a lot of time wondering what people think about art. Are the people in these portraits people with power? Ask is a very basic texting app that allows you to text and exchange photos with art historians and educators so that you can talk about art in real time during your visit. I guess that depends on your definition of power, but they could all be described as people of means, wealth, and prominence. The man you photograph is Washington A. Roebling, who was instrumental in the design and early construction of the Brooklyn Bridge. His wife is pictured in the portrait to the right. When Washington A. fell ill, Emily Warren Roebling saw the project to completion. She wore this yellow dress when she went to meet Queen's to consider. In this piece, Fred Wilson raises controversial questions about the racial identity of ancient Egyptians, referring to one of the most copied works of ancient civilization. The app is about more than providing information. We can find out directly from visitors what people want to know, what they find interesting, what they like, what they don't like. People that use the app help inform how we talk about the art for everybody. Some great examples are our Egyptian collection. One of the very first questions that we got, and we got over and over and again, are why the noses are broken. Why are the noses broken? That's a question that I'm sure I didn't spend five minutes on during my eight years in graduate school. For me, it was a revelation to know that that was so important to our visitors. I decided that it was time to figure out the correct answer. He decided to create a whole exhibition just around this idea of the broken noses in Egyptian sculpture, which is a direct correlation of the power of those questions that people had in the gallery. We don't just um, tell you information, uh, we can also play games. Swimming, swimming, near and far, there's a fish on each side of this jar. One of the ways that visitors can interact with us is by doing a scavenger hunt. Everyone's always very wide-eyed and sort of walking quickly from case to case to see if it fits the clue that they're looking for. Yes. Each of those four fish tell you a little something because they're four different species. And Great question. It's Albert Bierstadt. He made this painting during America's frenzied period of Manifest Destiny. And he was part of the propagandistic movement to convince people to claim land out west. To paint this picture, Bierstadt would have relied So is this what the Dumbo area once looked like? Asking questions, I think, really opens up opportunity for people to find a way into artwork that makes sense to them. Did women not venture outside, or were they just not in the painting? In another American Identities gallery, you can see many depictions of women, but in interior scenes. At the time, women were more encouraged to stay home and attend to children and domestic things. For me, the uniqueness of art is the ability to tell any and every story across time, across place, across people. Is a, a way into the experience of being human. As a viewer, I bring something to that story that the artist may or may not have thought about or may or may not intended. And then that opens up an avenue of conversation. Opening up what is really more of a true dialogue between the visitor and the museum is one of the things that makes this program so unique. Why is he specifically naked? Is this How the original does it frame? Take to paint How is this How artwork connected to today? Why do the artists use a dark palette to paint such a lively scene? 